doesn't to anyone <coughs> from the community who wants to do a presentation, that's how to do it. Um, fascinating to see how you do what you do with the constraints that you have. Um, great presentation, probably maybe not the best idea for a VCDX defense, Josh. Um, <laughs> but nonetheless, um, very interesting and good stuff. Thanks very much for coming on. Um, so by now you've all read my name and understand that I'm the guy from VMware. Greg is going to talk about uh, VMware Virtual Sand or VSAN. Um, as a quick introduction to myself, I'm a systems engineer in, uh, in Melbourne. Um, and this is, this is the other part of my job, um, to, to present at VMUX, uh, supposedly. So, quick five minute, ten minute overview of what vSAN is. We're not going to get into any real detail here about what the technology, uh, or how the technology works, because um, that would be a much, much longer session. However, um, yeah, yeah, that's right, I've got the other guys to present as well. But essentially, if I give you a quick overview in my words of what vSAN actually is, VMware took this approach for a lot of our customers, if you think very much how they run we, uh, you know, VMs on an ASX host on some x86 hardware and we virtualized the compute layer very successfully and we've now pro proven that the majority of our customers, or <coughs> our customers, kind of by definition I guess, uh, but a lot of the industry is actually using this technology, this virtualization technology to do that. So we fast forward to here and we think how could we potentially provide the same capability but with storage. So what we do in this particular space is we use any x86 server, the ones that customers have been used to using for the ESX, and we use internal disk in these servers to create this shared virtual SAN data store which is shared and distributed right across a, a, an ESX cluster or a vSphere cluster. Um, so firstly I guess it's, it's a flash optimised um, solution. So in this picture here you can quickly see that we've got a number of hard disks in each of these um, uh, in each of these hosts, and they might be SAS or they might be SATA type hard drives, and we've got at least a minimum of one SSD de device per node. And that SSD device acts as a as, a, um, as the flash optimization layer, obviously, um, from a read case or write buffer pers perspective. Um, the simplicity of how this actually hangs together is, is quite is quite amazing. Again, for any customer that's using any x86 platform. Um, or, or hardware vendor, it might be HP, it might be Cisco, um, Dell, etc, etc, they're able to use these and in fact there's two ways in which you can do this. You can go directly to the HCL, which customers are def definitely used to when they go and look at purchasing vSphere um, and they can buy any of those servers off that particular HCL. They then would drop down and, and purchase the right storage controller um, which, would, which would go into these servers and then add the disks to it. The second way is to use something called a vSAN ready node or vSAN ready system, uh, which is a pre-boxed, pre-canned solution from a lot of the vendors such as HP, Cisco, IBM and those sorts of things as well. Sorry, not HP, um, Dell. Um, HP <coughs> not, don't have one yet. But they have these specific systems which are pre-canned and pre-boxed and you can roll straight off the factory shelf. So, um, in terms of um, why VMware would actually do this and what this approach is actually doing for us. In, a, in my role in a lot of the customer space that I talk to, the common theme that keeps coming back at me is we want to simplify the storage environment that we have in the storage environment that we build. And if you look at what's happening in the storage industry at this particular time, regardless of the, of the vendor, this is the way in which customers expect their vendor to, to work with them. So, this is part of what VMware is taking to the market as well. And if you think, typically I guess in, in the way I used to do it, I used to create you know, different LUNs or different volumes or whatever it might be for each individual use case or each individual type of application that I needed in my VMware platform. So I would create one that had specific capabilities or features that were tied to it, i.e. snapshots or, or you know, dedupe and things like that, I would create ones that have specific SLAs or performance tiers or availability and things like that. And then I'd map them all up and then essentially whenever I'd go to provision that particular application, I'd then go and find the right bucket and dump it in the right bucket. But I had to do all the heavy lifting at the, you know, in the back end initially to get that presented as it was. Um, VSAN is taking a slightly different approach. As I mentioned before, when we have 
the discs, you know, the, the standard SATA or SAS discs in each of those ESX hosts, and we've created this data store, we give this ability for every VM or every VMDK to have a unique policy assigned to it. So for those of you who are VM admins, potentially, if you recall the VM workflow when you go and create the VM and create the disk, um, and you assign specifically a policy to that potentially, um, and it drops down and select the data store which you're going to actually provision that to. There's this ability that we have with storage policy based management so to select that policy. <coughs> and vSAN has five policies that are built in out of the box. And they're a mixture of capacity, performance or availability um, po policies that can be assigned. <coughs> Now why is this important typically for a lot of our customers is because when you look at a VM that sits on a host, that VM has specific requirements that are potentially unique and potentially very different to the VM that sits right beside it on that particular server. So the, the ability to be able to granularly select a policy for a VM or even for the VMDKs on a VM is something that we drive through the UI through our policy based automation and policy based placement. Certainly when we look at the customers who are trying to do self-service and these sorts of cloud type environments, that ability to provision that on the fly and let the storage subsystem below it create the right um, you know, number of copies, the right type of data services and things like that underneath um, is something that's really uh, worthwhile to them and it certainly takes a lot of the headache out of doing the upfront uh, work generally. So why would, a, why, would, why would a customer get out of this? What are the key benefits? The first is, is it's incredibly simple to do. As I mentioned, any hardware that a customer would, would purchase off a HCL, x86 hardware, um, or even a vSAN ready node that's pre-boxed. But essentially, if you're running vSphere 5.5 with update one, and vCenter 5.5 update one particularly, um, you have the ability to do this in two clicks. Probably even Josh could do it. If you're used to, if, if you are used to, <laughs> sorry, if, if you are, <laughs> if you, yeah, I'm going to stand on the back here. Yeah. Um, if you're used to uh, understanding how to configure HA or DRS at a cluster level property, this is exactly the way you do vSAN. So in fact, the vSAN, the enabled vSAN tick box is part of the cluster UI when you go and do that. So what happens when you tick that box is essentially all those disks that you had in each of those hosts now become a data store that's created and shared right across the entire right, right across the entire cluster. There's no iSCSI mount points or no NFS mounts. There's no uh, iSCSI targets or anything. This is a direct um, object-based distributed data store that's created by vSAN. There's no virtual appliance in this in this instance. Again, as I said, as it says there, it's completely embedded into the kernel. So from a simplistic perspective, there's nothing else to necessarily install. Um, it's, as I mentioned, Flash, app, Flash Accelerated there. We've done the typical Lab Queen tests, I guess, that any vendor will do um, with the 32 node cluster, um, which will give you a you know, maximum of sort of four, four petabyte um, data store, but it will scale at 100% reads up to you know, two million IOPS and all that sort of stuff, which is you know, not really helpful to anyone. Um, but the idea is essentially that as you, as you bring back the number of nodes and as you bring back um, you know, the mixed workloads and things like that, you'll certainly get a decent amount of performance for the generic workload that we're seeing. And really it's around uh, the lower you know, total cost of ownership here. So you know, typically we see large capex um, purchases in a lot of, in a lot of cases, um, but really the simplicity of managing this environment, particularly the, the provisioning and placement, of all of these uh, VMs and applications really gives you um, this sim simple way to, to operate and, and manage this environment. And as you probably sit here and, and look at you know, Phil and Josh and Rob talk about their solutions, well, you'll see this theme come through. And it's the same with every other vendor in the market. If you pay attention to what they're messaging to their customer base, this is exactly this sim simplicity of operations and simplicity um, of, uh, of um, you know, management is the thing that's the common theme that's coming through. So this is probably why, you know, I guess why the industry um, is moving so fast at this particular time for storage because there's a massive opportunity for every vendor, whether they're new or old, and old, I use the old term respectfully, um, to, to actually understand what, you know, what customers are, are after. 
um, and to provide some really good solutions and outcomes for the customer. So, as I put this slide up, I'll just pause for a second and say, where would we actually see this? And where, we, where as VMware would we go to the market and say, we see this as a good fit for them? The reality is at the moment what we're seeing is VDI, and particularly with our Horizon bundling, is a really good sweet spot for a lot of our customers. Um, and we're having a lot of conversations around that. There's some really good integrations also in terms of the, the tier two, tier three workloads, um, things like the remote office or branch office workloads. We don't want to provide specialised skills or specialised hardware particularly at some of these smaller sites. <coughs> um, with uh, replication targets or backup targets and things like that with some bundling with vSphere data protection and vSphere replication integration with SRM and things like that um, as a remote target sort of thing to <coughs> replicate uh, as a DR target where you don't want to have the same type of storage potentially um, or you know, a, a expensive storage. Um, as, as you have in your production environment, this might be a good replication target as well. Um, so it integrates you know, really well, again, with all of our technology you should be aware of, such as vMotion, DRS, Storage vMotion, HA, and all those bits and pieces. And we're also starting to see a lot of work happening in the uh, automation space, so particularly around vCloud Automation Center, which is near and dear to, to Grant's heart. Um, to be able to provision workloads into these data stores and also with these center operations to be able to manage the workloads and manage this data store um, through these particular panels. So providing as we, as we go forward a complete end-to-end -end solution around um, how a VMware customer would integrate vSAN as a storage platform um, into some of the work that they're doing. Um, not necessarily all of the work that, we, that they're doing and all of the storage that they've got in their environment but certainly for, for certain use cases such as you know, management clusters, VDI, tier two, tier three, dev test workloads, backup and, and, and replication targets and things like that. So that's all I wanted to, <coughs> to get across to you today. We've got a lot more to talk about, but we can do that um, probably in the panel. Um, and later on, if you have a beer, depending on how, how many I have, I can, I can tell you lots more. So thank you. <laughs>